Today we'll discuss edema and anasarca. These problems are very common in the hospital and in the outpatient setting, and it's important to understand how to approach the patient who has edema or anasarca. I define anasarca as edema or swelling in two different vascular beds, and let's investigate that further. In terms of the lung, this means pulmonary edema. In terms of the legs, this means peripheral edema. In the neck, it can manifest as increased jugular venous pressure. And in the abdomen, it can present as ascites. And in males, it can also present as scrotal edema. So the causes of edema are limited, and, and each can be defined separately. The first is congestive heart failure. So if a patient presents with edema, they can either have congestive heart failure, which presents as orthopnea and PND. They can have cirrhosis, which may present as ascites and or peripheral edema. Or they can have nephrosis, which presents commonly with diabetes, but can be associated with other causes as well. The causes of edema are three only, CHF, cirrhosis, and nephrosis. Physiologically, this leads to IVVD. IVVD stands for intravascular volume depletion. The body perceives low volume, and this triggers a cascade of events physiologically. This low volume leads to low perfusion, particularly of the juxtaglomerular cells in the kidney. The kidney is unaware of why there's low perfusion. In many of these states, it's a maladaptive process of third spacing, as opposed to true intravascular volume depletion from bleeding or decreased PO intake. This subsequently leads to the production of renin and the four A's, angiotensin 1, angiotensin 2, aldactone, and ADH. This cascade leads to the retention of more edema, and in this case, a maladaptive process, and the patient presents with more swelling. It's very important to know how to stop the process, and this can be done at each step in the physiologic process. The most important treatment option is low sodium intake. Edema is present when there's more sodium present than can be excreted, and the patient must engage in a low sodium diet to help make the treatment plans effective. This is often the number one reason that the treatment plan is thwarted. Pharmacolog pharmacologically, ACE inhibitors and ARBs can be used to help stop the renin angiotensin process, and aldactone or aldosterone antagonists can be used to stop the retention of sodium via aldosterone secretion. Newer drugs, including Vaptans, can be used to affect the collecting duct, although they aren't clinically relevant at present in most hospitals. So stopping the process is very important and can be summarized by the use of low sodium, ACE inhibitors and ARBs, aldosterone antagonists, and Vaptans. Let's dig a little deeper. In terms of the drugs, angiotensin 1 can be blocked by the use of an ACE inhibitor. Angiotensin 2 can be blocked by the use of angiotensin receptor blockers or combinations thereof. Aldosterone can be blocked by the use of aldactone or other aldosterone antagonists. And ADH can be blocked with the use of Vaptans. So in summary, in a patient who presents with edema, it's very important to recognize the causes, which include some congestive heart flare, cirrhosis, and nephrosis. Attack those causes individually, but in terms of treatment, the treatment plans are similar. All three causes require the patient to engage in a low-sodium diet. Congestive heart failure and nephrosis particularly respond to ACE inhibitors and ARBs. Aldosterone antagonists are utilized in all three causes, but specifically can be used in cirrhosis. And Vaptan's usages are slowly gaining momentum. So edema and anasarca is a clinical problem that is difficult to treat, and one must understand the clinical presentation and what is going on physiologically. That is edema and anasarca.